What's up, Midpoint? It's good to see you. My name's John. I'm glad to be here with you. I want to tell you about something that happened the other day. Uh, I walked into church and Funny, I had just actually paid a lot of bills and other things and I needed just a little bit of money to help me over a couple of days before while I was waiting for some more money to come in. And I was walking into church and there were different people coming in and everything. And I saw a man that I met many, many years ago, several years ago. It's a Chinese man, actually, that I had gone to school with him and I had helped him do some things back in the day, but I hadn't thought anything about it. I was just being a good friend to him at the time. And uh, I, I didn't think he even remembered my name. Well, I introduced myself to him and he said, oh, I remember you. He said, you helped me when I, when I was just getting started here in this country. And he, and he pulled me over to the side and he reached into his pocket and he pulled out and he gave me a hundred dollar bill. And I thought, oh my gracious, a hundred dollar bill. That's been so, such a long time since somebody's done that. But I thought he was so generous to me but he told me it was because I had been generous to him uh, so many years ago that he wanted to give me that gift. Uh, that was a long time ago that I did that, but he remembered that. And that's kind of what today's lesson is all about. It's about generosity, but not necessarily about generosity with money, but about generosity with your time and about giving of yourself in every way. I want to read to you a scripture from a book called Second Thessalonians. Now that's a long title, but it's because it was written to a group of people, to a, a small church that lived in the city of Thessalonica from a long time ago. That was in the, like the northern part of Greece. And they were had been taken over by the Romans at that point in time. And so the Romans there, they were really, really strict on what they wanted Christians to be able to do. They didn't want them to go out telling a whole lot of people about Jesus. They weren't trying to get, they were trying to keep them from going and telling a whole too many people about Jesus to bringing them into, into the church. They didn't necessarily want the church to grow. They just wanted them to just exist as a little group and not give them any trouble. Well, the church there, they had done pretty well with that for a long time, but as time went by and they grew, uh, they were getting more and more pressure from the Romans. And so some of the people in the Thessalonian church had just about decided, you know what, maybe we should step away from our faith in the Lord and just do with what the Romans said, because this is getting really hard. So I'm going to read to you what Paul wrote to them, what the Apostle Paul wrote to them at the time. This is 2 Thessalonians 2. Verses 7 and 8. It says, As apostles of Christ, we certainly had a right to make some demands of you, but instead we were like children among you, or we were like a mother feeding and caring for her own children. We loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's good news, but our own lives too. See, Paul was telling them, he was reminding them of how much he had given to them when he had been there. He and he had a, a friend who was there with him named Silas, and they were helping the, the Thessalonians when they were there, and they'd given of themselves. So Paul wanted them to build this community of believers that were very generous with other time with each other. But the only problem with that is that takes time to do that. It's a lot of work to do that. It's, it's people, when people give of their, themselves, give of their time, it takes a whole lot from them to be able to do that. Now, I remember something like that happening to me and to our church at one point in time. Years and years and years ago, in 2005, uh, I know I'm old, but in 2005, uh, we had a hurricane here called Hurricane Katrina, and it was one of the biggest hurricanes that's ever hit the United States. And you know, lots of buildings were, were flooded and lots of different things were happening. We needed a lot of help, uh, as much help as we could get from people from all over the United States and all around the world. Well, there was a church in California that came and they gave of their time uh, over and over and over again. They gave of their time. People from, the, from even from little kids to, to old people, they gave of their time. In fact, over the course of like three years, they brought 58 different trips of people here, giving of them time, uh, giving of their time to help us as a church. And in fact, I don't think that we would be where we are right now as a church. I don't think we would have survived Hurricane Ida as much as we did if we hadn't had their help to know what to do after Hurricane Katrina. And even their children, my wife and I got to go and visit with their children when they had a, a VBS uh, at their church in California. And while they were in their VBS, they were praying for 
our church. They were praying for our pastors. They were praying for our people, our, for the children of our church. They were giving of themselves to us. And those, those children collected a lot of, those children collected money to give to us. They were very generous in money and they, uh, they collected enough money to buy our church, the, the children in our church, a little playground in this one location there. And so they gave of themselves. They were very generous to us. And I remember being so humbled by, by how generous they were and how loving they were to us at that point in time. But giving of our time takes a lot more sometimes than just giving of our money. When you give of your money, you're like, oh, okay, well, here you go. But then you give of that and that's fine because you can make more money, but you can't make more time. Time is something that's, that's hard. And so here's some, here's some tips on how to give of yourself in there. First, you have to be honest with yourself about how you actually spend your time in the first place. When I look at the time that I spend, I think, you know what, you know what, I don't have any time to do anything. And then I look and I'm just like, okay, well, I'm spending an hour here watching this TV show. I'm, I'm, I'm wasting time on TikTok and YouTube and everything, and this thing, and Instagram. Uh, and then, I, you know, there's lots of things that I, that I realize I actually do have time if I figure it out. Then I have to be, sac you have to be sacrificial. What that means is, you have to sometimes be willing to not do one thing so that you can do something else that's better. So if you're going to help somebody, sometimes you got to give of what you have. And you may not think you have a whole lot. So you look to see what you're doing and then you, then you find the time that you have and, and you give it. Third thing that you do is you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional about what you're doing. You have to, that means you make a plan. You make a plan to, and you look at your schedule, you pick out a time and a place, and then you just do it. You do it there. So, so Paul and Silas, Paul and his friend Silas that we were talking about before, and we read you from the scripture, they didn't come up with the idea though of generously giving of their time, their energy, their love, and their care for others. They actually experienced that from Jesus. We all do. The Bible says that God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, that Christ died for us. See, Jesus came, and, he, and, the, and the Lord, Jesus is God, and so God came and gave up his own time, his own self, to spend this time that Jesus was on earth giving of himself. He gave his life for us. And so that was a great example uh, for Paul. And Paul says, hey, I'm, Jesus did this for us. We did this for you. You all need to do this for each other. We need to do that for each other too. This is what the Bible says about Jesus giving, giving time to us. It says in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, it says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So Paul saw that this sal saw the salvation, saw everything that Jesus had done for us to be able to receive that salvation. He saw that gift from the God, the gift of his time to us. So he gave his time to the people in Thess Thessalonica and he was encouraging them to do the same thing. And he's encouraging us God wants us to do the same thing today. He wants us to be generous of our time with each other. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I come before you today and I pray for the Midpoint students. I pray that you would help them to be generous with their time and showing love to others and showing your love to others by the actions and the deeds and the time that they give them. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much. See you later. The awkward pause. <laughs>